Do you want to know about problems on Unraid? Do you want to know when updates are available in Unraid? Well, stay tuned and I'm going to show you how to set this up in Unraid using notifications. Welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter, your home for all things relating to smart home technology. In this episode, we're going to talk about how to set up notifications in Unraid. Hi, I'm Ron Nutter and we're going to be working on this together. This content is also available as an Amazon flash briefing or podcast. Please go to techbyteswithrunnutter.com for more information. For any items mentioned in this episode, there are affiliate links in the description. If you click on these links, I will get a small commission, but that won't affect the price you pay for the item. If you want to get notified when new content is uploaded, please click on subscribe and enable notifications. Now here's what we're going to be covering in this video, and that's how to set up notifications in Unrate. First, why you should enable notifications. Two, selecting an email provider. And three, configuring alerts. Well, you're probably familiar with notifications in Unraid and may not realize the level of flexibility. Now, when you go into your Unraid console, this is how it's going to start out. And if there's any issues you need to know about or things that need to be handled, you're going to see that over in here. But there's an easier way to do it where you're not dependent on going into the page to know if there's a problem. And wouldn't you rather know as soon as something needs your attention instead of finding out maybe, oh, a day later, like I did when I had a drive fail? Well, let's go over into the notifications tab and I'll show you how to get this up and running. Well, the first thing you're gonna need to do is decide how you want to be alerted. Now, as you will see, there are a host of options over here. I'm gonna go with email, but if you're using Boxcar, Discord, Gotify, Join, Prowl, you see the list and it's a pretty long one. You've got a lot of options here to work with. So we're going to go back up in here and go with SMTP. Now I've got my, what I'll call production email on another server. I mean, on another uh, mail provider. So just to avoid possible problems and to give you some redundancy, I encourage you to use a different provider. There's no one right or wrong provider. As you can see, we go, we'll click on the down arrow here and there is a host. Now the list needs to be cleaned up a little bit because Hotmail has now been rolled in to Outlook, but there are quite a few others here. You, there's even custom. And if you're really feeling adventurous, you can set up your own mail server on your Unraid box, but that's a subject for another video. A couple of things that you'll need to do is you're going to have to fill in the sending email address. Now that's going to be the email address of the account that you're using on the say Yahoo or whoever you're using. If you try to use a different email address, it's probably going to fail authentication because it's going to see a foreign email address go through. So you'll need to make sure that that matches. Now you may be able to add supplementary email addresses, but again, stick with the one when you're first starting this up. In terms of email recipients, you could have this be a distribution list. I've not had more than one email address here, so I'm assuming you would have to do something like comma separation or maybe semicolon. I've not looked into that because I just use a single email address. Now, priority and header, that's going to help flag it in the email client that's going to be receiving this. Now, where it says mail service, says FQDN of sending email server. That's fully qualified domain name. So if it was, say, Yahoo, it would be something like mailserver.yahoo.com. Again, when you set up the account, it should tell you all the settings you're going to need to do. To do. I'm using port 465, which you want to have a secure port, and most of the mail servers anymore support this. And you'll just need to decide if you're going to use SSL TLS, uh, start TLS, or if you're going to use a custom certificate. Again, I'm trying to keep this simple, so we're going to go with just using SSL TLS, or transport layer security. There are several ways you can authenticate. I just went with straight login and that will be the username and password for the account. Now, more of the email providers are starting to have what they call application passwords. Now, that is a very long, very ugly password that you're not going to want to try to remember, but you want to have that kind of setup when you're setting up alerts further from Unraid or some other system. That way it helps avoid the account being compromised. And you've also got a little bit of an audit trail on the email system when you're sending alerts if there's a problem. Now, once you get all this good stuff filled in, you'll want to click apply. I'm not gonna do it because it's gonna wipe out the settings I've got and then click test. And it should take about between 20 to 30 seconds and then you should see email sent. Then you should be able to go into your email client for Yahoo or whatever system you're using 
and verify that it did come in. Now, it will sometimes take several minutes, so don't expect it to be instantaneously coming through. If you're using Google Mail, be aware that between, I've seen this happen between about midnight and two to three in the morning, sometimes mail runs a little bit sluggish, so it may take a little bit longer if you're setting this up in the wee hours of the morning. But that is how you get an email system set up. If you want to set up more than one, there's nothing saying that you can't. And that's another good thing to think about doing that you would have redundancy. So if there was a problem with the sending mail server and you went to say, use Discord, or I would probably use something like Slack maybe, that you have more than one source to get the alerts out. And especially if you have multiple people looking at the alerts, if you're, for example, running this for a company, then going to something like Slack would then go to a central place. Because if that's your focus on using a work tool like Slack, then that makes a lot of sense to use that instead of or in addition to email. Again, your choice on how you get this set up. When you're setting up that new account for the smart home cloud service or device, please get a copy of my smart home device account checklist you see here on the screen. This will help make sure that everything gets written down that you entered to get that account created. The form will also serve as a backup copy when you get this entered into your password manager app. And if you're not already using a password manager app, please get one now and get started. You will be subscribed to my email list in exchange for the checklist. I won't share, rent, or sell your information information to anyone. Well, now you should have your email system or provider set up and test it. Once you've got that verified, and that's got to be done before you can do anything else, or you're just kind of spinning your wheels. Now we're ready to go ahead and set up the alerts. So we'll go back over here and now we're in the top section under notification settings. And this gives you a lot of granularity to work with. Now, for example, what I've done is I'll go down here to, you can store notifications to flash that could chew up a lot of space unless you've got a large flash drive booting your Unrate server. Now I've got system notifications enabled to have it check Unrate OS update, unless you're in a new, uh, version train. For example, I'm on 6.9.2. The next version is not available yet. If you really have to stay up on the latest and greatest, that would be one to set up. But I'm in Unrate enough that if there's an update coming out, I probably will have gotten an email or I will be finding that out once I go into here. Now, the other thing is you've got several things to do here. You've got Unraid plugins update. I do like to use that one. And those typically are not getting updated a lot. So you've got several options to go with. You can check once a month, once a week, you see the options here. So there's no right or wrong way on how to do that one. That one I set up once a week because I'm running about seven of them now, probably going to grow. And it was interesting to note that, especially like in Plex, I had an update notification within the Plex app about a week and a half to two weeks before the update showed available and I didn't want to have to manually download it and put it in. I wanted it to be available through the Unraid console here. So that was nice to know that at least I had a heads up that there was an update coming that I was going to need to look at scheduling some downtime for. Now, Docker update, if there's any updates to Docker or the Docker apps. Now I've got that checking daily. Again, I just started this frequency just to kind of get a feel for how much I wanted to dial things back. So there's no right or wrong way here. Language update notification, unless you are running more than one language, that's not something that to me is a high priority. So I've left that one to never check. Now, array status notification, that's the big one that got me looking at all this because if you follow one of my previous videos, you notice I got bit by a drive failure. And it by the time I found out about it, the drive had been uh, disabled for about a day. Fortunately, I already had one on the way, but you know, that's the kind of thing that you may not always be able to wait for another drive to show up. So that one I've got selecting twice a day because lately I have been leaving the Unraid server up and running all the time. So knowing when I've got a drive failure as reasonably soon as is possible gives me an option that I could have a drive here the next day. So I minimize my downtime. I am looking at putting a second drive online for parity. So that should lessen the urgency to get another drive in. And I will plan on keeping a spare drive. And I did have one set up in the Unrate server, but I, because of some storage needs, I went ahead and had to add that one into the array. So that kind of blew my uh, 
hot standby drive, even though it wasn't truly hot standby, I just had to shut down the array, add the drive and bring the array back up. Now, the other thing that you will want to do is on the available notifications, you have to make sure that you've got email checked down here, because if you don't have email checked, everything you did down here in SMTP is not going to do you any good. So I just went ahead and clicked all three for email update. Now, notification entry, there are different levels of this. And again, for notices, warnings, and alerts, I went ahead and checked all of them over time, depending on what I see. And the email will tell you what, what level or type of notification it is that I may not want those going on email because it may be more important for me to have, say, warnings and alerts and not give the notices out there. So again, this is going to be a learning curve and it's going to be something that's going to be very easy to do. It's just going to take a little bit of time to figure out what's going to be best for your situation. Now, the notifications display, I'm leaving it on detailed. You could leave it summarized. I'm not worried about a lot of detail up here because it beats having to go look up an email. Now, nothing would be complete unless you actually had a chance to see one of the emails because the test email you're going to have come through, it's just going to say, hi, I'm working in, but not really give you an idea of the full notification. Now, this is where I've got detailed turned on and tells you that I've got five disks in the array, gives you the serial number, the drive designation, the temperature of the drive. And that's something nice to have because I've recently started changing out to the Western Digital Reds and I'm noticing it's running an average of six to 10 degrees below the temperature of the other brand of drive that I was using. So that was a nice thing to learn. With the cache drive, it's not reporting back its temperature, but that's fine. There's probably not the sensors in there that the drives have. It tells you parities is fine, and the last time it checked it, and how long it took. So there's good information here to have available. There's not a right or wrong way to do this, but it's just a matter of you finding out what's going to work best for you. If you're watching this on YouTube, you will see videos on the screen that are similar to the one you've just watched or other content that YouTube thinks you might be interested in. If this video helps you or provides value, please click on that like button, thumbs up. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please click on subscribe now and enable notifications. We'll see you next episode. Thanks for watching.